it is absolutely freezing outside yeah Paula wants to go get some mullets good luck to him I'll stand there drink my coffee and keep my feet dry <laughs> okay, it's cold <laughs> it's freezing <laughs> winter is yeah so we'll stand there and laugh at him fishing at six o'clock in the morning <laughs> Sometimes we wonder if it's a good idea. But we're gonna try. We're not gonna give up. Short pants, no shoes. It's minus 26 outside. But the man wants his mullet. Did you get your mullet? I got one! <laughs> Let's pack up and go! <laughs> yeah. Hey guys, so we're um, fishing basically with a throw net today because it's so cold. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Uh, we're fishing, netting for some mullets. Um, hopefully we get a couple and then uh, we're gonna head to into paradise and we'll see if we can get maybe a smoothie or a spotty stay tuned the mother of a mullet put some decent sized mullets let's see we can get something. Yes! No man. Anyhow, got some mullet. Good. Hey, it's good. cold. Good stop. Who's burning pipe is it? Good stop. <laughs> I don't think I have those. Yeah, I'll get shivers down. So we um, yeah at Hans Avenue. We're gonna see what it looks like. Uh, our target species for today is anything that bites. Anything that bites. <laughs> it's cold. And if you think it's cold, let's see. So Paula reckons this is gonna be an easy one. Take a look at all those stairs. My trolley's got to go down there. I'll get Paula to wait at the bottom so he can catch everything as it rolls down. <laughs> That's a lot of stairs. That's a lot of stairs. We're gonna put out one life bait and Daniel said he's gonna put out a just a mullet cutlet and see if we can maybe get a spotty and maybe there's still a raggy around early this morning. Uh, yeah the water looks good. We're gonna fish for either a spotty and maybe fish for a cop. So we'll see. Big, uh, big cable or small cable? Okay guys, so we're throwing out a big mullet.
Okay guys, so it is quite a big mullet to throw, but because we're fishing a spot where you don't have to cast far, it's possible. Guys, so the water is quite flat where we're fishing at the moment in the hole. Uh, so yeah, let's see if we get a pull. Like I said, with the bigger mullet, obviously you don't have to cast far here yeah, because the pool's right, like probably 30 meters, 40 meters where it starts. Okay, guys, so tackle setup for today that I chose was I've got a Stella 20,000. With a Maxwell spool, it's a 25,000 Maxwell spool, so it's basically an upgrade between the 20 and the 30,000 on the sellers. And then I got 80 pound braid, and I'm fishing full metal jacket. Well, it's very rocky, uh, so basically, if, if we get a pickup, we want to try and land the fish as quick as possible. That's why I'm fishing that heavy. So, yeah, and I'm fishing with a Ryzen Triple XH. Also, very beefy rod, very strong. It is a bit overkill, but we want to try and land the fish as quick as possible. It gives it a better chance to swim away, much stronger. So let's see. sardine belly the last throw and I had a decent pull so I've just put another one on over here now and we'll see what happens it felt very cobbish that part but let's see Guys, so I'm gonna try and scratch for a small cubby. I've got a very small, long hockey bait. So, tackle of choice for this. I'm fishing 30 pounds. Whiplash, um, a Stella 10,000 with a Horizon 6. Obviously, we're fishing between the rocks, so you want a little bit more cooling power if you get a cracker or maybe a punzi. Let's see. Coming across even to this like deeper channel. He was there, man. A, a, oh, a big cop. But yeah, fish with these small hooks, fishing for other things, and then something like that will pick you up. You want to move? No. Huh? No, I'm going to throw for cob now. What you say? I'm going to throw for cob now. You say you lost the cob? Oh, I saw the thing. I saw you fighting me. Eh? It wasn't a small fish, my friend. It was a big fish. The tide's gonna start pushing soon, so 
hopefully the next spot that we go to we we've caught a couple of fish there last week so hopefully we get something let's see stay tuned It hasn't been going well. We started. What time did we start this morning, Paula? Seven o'clock. Ten to seven. Ten to seven. It is now ten past twelve, and we've yet to catch a fish. We've lost. I lost a nice big cob down that way. We've now come over to Volskipper. It's low, probably in about twenty-five minutes' time. So we wanted to be out on a pushing tide and fish till about half past five, somewhere around there. It looks much better than what it did that side. So hopefully we can get something on the camera and show you a few fish. Hold thumbs, we'll get back to you on that one. I'll see if there's a punzi around. Hook's a little bit small for a punzi, but you never know. And if you guys have a look at how dirty this piece of chocker is, what I did was I took a little piece of the swimming prawns that we're fishing with and I just hit that head part into the chocker just to give it a little bit more flavor, a little bit more scent in the water. With the fishing being as difficult as what it is at the moment, we're trying everything. But, we still got hope, the tide's still going to start pushing and I think that's when uh, the things are going to start happening. So there he is. Got your two little tentacles, got your hook sticking out nice, all that flavour from those prawns that was knocked into the chocker, it's nice and soft. Hands are nice and dirty. Some fish has to eat it somewhere. Tide is still way too low. But it's gonna happen just now. In an hour it's probably gonna get fine. That's um, what runs we near the last time. We're going to get a few more, that is what we're going to fish for. Got the right bait, just need the tight to push it. I think we should get a, I think we should get a map. It looks good. Devils to join Daniel and Paolo. The tide's still much too low. I think they've been struggling all day and nothing's happening yet but it looks good. I think it's going to get, get quite fun in about an hour or two. Hopefully those bronze beam come in. We got quite a few over there. Daniel got that really nice cracker as well so we're back. Um, I'm going to make a throw at Devils at Langrafia for a small bag spot. Apparently the spot is with Gale yesterday. So. See, see if we can get some bites, just have some fun. A bit of a lunch break fishing session for me, so it'll be a short run, but I'll definitely get something. So 
if you saw there, Daniel caught that nice little bronze beam and he ran <laughs> right to where I'm fishing to go release it. Because there's a theory that uh, with the bronze beam, if you release it where you catch it, it spooks the shoal. Then that whole shoal the bronze beam gets a bit scared and they, and they move on. Um, it's sort of known as a bit of a shoaling fish that shoal will come in, feed together, and sort of come and go. But if you release one and it's a bit like spooked or tired after its fight, apparently scares the others. So you can see he ran down about 60, 70 meters away to, to go release it down there. So then they're going to keep fishing there. So it's, it's an interesting theory. I mean, I've heard it a lot. I haven't tested it much myself. So, yeah. Or zebra. But at least something is starting to happen. The ever present blacktail. Second cast, first fish for me. So. This is such a good duck pole bite. Look at it. This is such a good duck pole bite. Like where would you get a better bite than this bite? Okay guys, so uh, I thought I started pushing and uh, eventually got the fish that we wanted and fish our target fish for today. Uh, yeah, nice bronze bream, as they call him in the Cape Horn, Arty. Let's get him back into the water, try for another one. Fishing for the bronze bream, I like a small J hook, so it looks fine, anything for the J. I'm not sure if you can see here, but if you look carefully, I leave a bit of the tag end out on that on that hook, on the knot of the hook there. We'll see why now. Little piece of pink prawn. I actually throw very small baits at them usually. I'm just gonna take the shell off and I'm gonna thread it onto the hook. So and then that little tag end will pull it over the bait. So that tag is not inside the bait, but it's going to help hold the bait on a little bit more as well, so it's not going to slide off. Just pulling up a little bit so that it hooks there nicely. You can see it's seated just on the curve of the prawn. Give it a tiny bit of cotton here. You can see I'm cottoning above that little tag end, so it can't pull back against it. It's a nice little trick. And then, I mean, that's perfect. That's actually what to catch the bronze beam on, just like that. But just to spruce it up a little, got a white muscle. And this one, I'm just going to lay on the side. So let's see it. On this side, looks like the bites are starting now. A couple of things starting to happen. So I'll just use my fingers and the cotton to make a little, a little noodle <laughs> for the bronze beer. Alright. 
can see that's the end result got the white muscle bit of the pink prawn that circle look looks like it's buried uh, sorry the j-hook but it's very soft around there and I mean, that that bit of the, the white muscle is incredibly soft so any bite it's really gonna get in for sure nice little bait to throw in the rocks to catch all kinds of things like that Nice size hot here with some prawn in the corner of the market. You can see spot on. Oh, that was a nice one. That was a nice one. Chases them all away. Oh, that was a nice one. Oh, that was a big one. Wonder why came off. Was that the bait you just made? Yeah. Quick it's cool. the instant flight. Yeah. That's not what we want. Fishing for sharks, we're catching sharks for more sharks. <laughs> See, there's that little J hook, the same bait that I showed you guys. This is a, like a little one. They box so nice, they're so much fun to catch. I actually want to measure this one just to get, just to see. A small little black tail. Unfortunately, it swallowed the hook. 